The focus is going to be on the connections between Buddhist teachings and the kind of social and environmental challenges that we face today. And, and I put it that way intentionally because we're not only going to be talking about social and ecological issues, but we're also going to be a, spending a fair amount of time clarifying the, those aspects of traditional Buddhist teachings, looking at them in a certain light that helps us see their social and ecological implications. So, for example, uh, I'll be inquiring into and you'll be learning about uh, dukkha or suffering in the broad sense and anatta, that other really important claim of no self or not self, and in particular looking at it in, in terms of the usual but delusive sense of separation that we tend to have between the feeling of a separate sense of self inside and other people, the rest of the world, as being outside. Uh, along with that, we'll be talking about many other issues such as karma, uh, and the three poisons, greed, ill will, delusion, and how can we understand them today? How can we understand enlightenment or awakening in, in ways that, again, clarify the, imp the implications for the social issues that we face today? Um, and one of the main focuses will be exploring some of the very suggestive parallels between our individual predicament according to traditional Buddhist teachings and the kind of collective predicament that we face today. Because we not only have individual senses of self, we have collective senses of self that tend to be subject to the same kinds of dynamics, the same kinds of problems. That's on the Buddhist side. Uh, and then you'll be learning a lot about the, the way that those teachings, therefore, can be applied to offer Buddhist perspectives, Buddhist insights into things like uh, consumerism, uh, advertising, the way that our attention is manipulated and commodified, uh, things like uh, war and militarism, uh, racism and sexism, including patriarchy, of course, um, how the three poisons, which traditionally are understood in, in individual personal terms in Buddhism, how they have become institutionalized in the modern world, uh, and of course a number of ecological issues. Uh, what does Buddhism imply about how we understand and respond to something like uh, climate change, and not only climate change, but other ecological issues such as um, uh, species extinction and uh, uh, pollution and, and so forth. Uh, we'll also be looking at the what might be called the non-duality of hope and despair, the way that we tend to fall into that when we think about some of these serious really serious issues and you know what does Buddhism have to say about that and putting it all together what does all this mean for how we understand the Bodhisattva path today